Thank you. April 30th, 1985 was a day for multiple celebrations in the patron household. The first celebration was the birth of our second son, and on that chilly morning before 8 a.m., Daniel James Patron made his way into the world. We knew that he was healthy, and we knew that it was love at first sight. What we didn't know was that little man resting, resting comfortably in our arms was the person who was destined to become our hero. The second cause for celebration was the front page headlines of our local newspaper, the Canton Repository. That bold headline on that 30th day of April in 1985 celebrated the 10 year anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War. And when I saw that headline, I thought to myself how lucky I was to have two sons born in peacetime. One on the very anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War. I thought we would never have to witness the pain, the grief, the destruction that we watched with horror on our 1970s television screens, and we would never understand fully what the family of Charles Kirby Wilcox and thousands of other families like them had endured. What I couldn't possibly know was that one day, many years distant, our paths and those of the Wilcox family would intersect for one more celebration to honor and remember our heroes. To all of the members of NEOPAT, the Northeast Ohio Foundation for Patriotism, especially Mike Swallow and Mike Zaccardi, and to the family of Charles Kirby Wilcox, we're so very honored to be here with you tonight to celebrate the lives of our fallen heroes. Sadly, however, my family now understands fully that there's no such thing as peacetime and that the loss of a loved one fighting for a cause much larger than himself in a place thousands of miles away from home with no family to hold him when he takes his last breath is traumatic. And the pain and the grief is at times all consuming. We also understand that the grief is strangely mixed with an intense measure of pride. After all, we had a hand in raising a true American hero. My mission for the past 19 months since we lost our son and the mission of my son and daughter-in-law and my husband since that fateful ring of our doorbell to deliver the most devastating news of our lives arrived has been to preserve the memory of our son, Sergeant Daniel James Patron. He is so worth remembering. Danny, Dan the man, Dan dog, the dude, or as Danny's grandmother described him, the hunk, graduated with the Perry High School class of 2003 where he was the star of his high school musical and excelled as a drummer in the marching band. Dan also taught himself how to play the bagpipes. In fact, he was well known for appearing at a myriad of functions wearing his kilt with his bagpipe in tow. Dan was a kind and gentle soul and his unassuming demeanor made him a people magnet. In high school, he belonged to every group and yet he belonged to no group. Everyone wanted to be his friend, and he was a friend to all. Dan began his career in the United States Marine Corps immediately following his high school graduation. He first wrote about his interest in the military in his senior class autobiography. This is an excerpt. A major change in my life was when I first told mom and dad I was joining the Marine Corps. After a week of trying to convince them, they signed for me and now I am now an enlisted Marine. On July 7, 2003, I will be leaving everything behind. I will be leaving to face 13 weeks of hell. I will not be a civilian anymore, but I will be a soldier, and I will be the best damn soldier there is. Someday, I will march in the Commandant's own. Well, Dan completed recruit training at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, North Carolina, in October 2003 and proceeded to check into the School of Music in Norfolk, Virginia, where he completed his music training in May of 2004. Then he joined the Second Marine Aircraft Wing Band out of Cherry Point, North Carolina. And during his first four years of enlistment, Dan traveled and performed 
all over the world with the United States Marine Corps Band as a drummer. In May 2005, Dan volunteered for his first deployment in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. And when he arrived home safely from that de deployment, he did something we never expected. He submitted a lateral move package into Explosive Ordnance Disposal, or EOD, often referred to as the most dangerous job in the world by many. Our son, Din, would now be detonating bombs for a living. In February 2008, Dan graduated from EOD school and shortly thereafter reported to the 2nd Marine, 8th Engineer Support Battalion, EOD Company, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. There he deployed for a second time up to Iraq in July 2008 and returned home safely in March of 2009. Five months later, he married his sweetheart, Cody Drace Patron, on August 26, 2009. Dan settled into married life in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, with his wife and his three beloved dogs. There he enjoyed dirt bike riding, getting his hands dirty, caring for his pets, barbecuing with friends every Sunday night. Now Dan could have coasted through until the end of his contract with the Marine Corps, enjoying the good life. But when he was just a few months away from civilian life for the very first time since he graduated from high school, Dan did what he would always do. He surprised us with his decision to extend for deployment. In other words, Dan volunteered to deploy to Afghanistan and extend his contract from July 2011 to November 2011. On April 5th, he voluntarily deployed for a third time. This deployment however, was far different from the previous two. This one was marred with bloodshed, bloodshed, destruction, and death, and Dan was a first-hand witness. Dan rode home with a heavy heart when the first of his brothers-in-arms, Gunny Sergeant E.J. Pate, was killed at the end of June in 2011. Dan was unable to look at the pictures of Gunny Pate's funeral. Two weeks later, Dan's EOD partner, Sergeant Johnny Morris, returned home to the United States, minus his left leg. And two weeks after that, Sergeant Brad Lang uh, uh, joined him, also returning home, having lost both legs above the knee in an IED blast. Although the offer was made, Dan refused to leave the field for some much needed R and R. And despite all the de destruction and bloodshed, Dan maintained his sense of humor and that always present, dazzling smile of his. In one of his final emails home to us, he joked about how he couldn't wait to come home, where all he would have to worry about was stepping in was dog poop. <laughs> Danny never got that chance. In Sangin, Afghanistan, on the 6th of August, 2011, Dan, who had rendered hundreds of bombs safe and saved as many lives, knelt over a bomb to do his job when it detonated. We buried Dan in a cemetery across the street from his high school alma mater exactly one week later. I have so many vivid images of that day in August and the weeks that followed in my brain that sometimes it hurts. I ask myself every day, did this really happen? And the answer is, of course, yes. We did meet our son's flag-draped coffin under the midnight sky in Dover, Delaware. We did see a plane cross our line of vision and pull into a hangar at the Akron Canton Airport, knowing that it carried our son, who was arriving home for the last time. And we did watch his casket slide into do the doorway of that plane and then watched as it was lovingly loaded into the hearse where Danny took his final ride back home to his beloved Canton, Ohio. And yes, we did bury our son, not once, but twice. The second time in a private service after learning that additional remains had been found in Afghanistan and returned to us. I try not to dwell on how Danny died, rather I want to see the joy in how he lived and his was a life well lived. I want you to know that Danny was a simple man who did great things. I want you to know that he loved to dip his Norsha rolls 
in a massive pile of mashed potatoes and gravy and that he loved green monster drinks and that his jaw cracked just a little every single time he ate. And I want you to know that he had a dazzling smile with the most beautiful set of perfect white teeth I've ever seen. And I want everyone to remember that he loved his family and his country so much that he gave everything that he had to ensure that we remain safe and free. We must never forget men such as Sergeant Daniel, the dude patron, Charles Kirby Wilcox, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Staff Sergeant Richard Ramey, whose parents, Jerry and Julie, are here with us tonight, and they were the first gold, gold star family on our doorstep and helped us through the most difficult times. They lost their son in February of 2004. We must never forget all the men and women who have and continue to serve or have given all they had to ensure our freedom and safety. But we cannot preserve their memories alone. Thank God that there are people and organizations who are dedicated to helping us do what we cannot do by ourselves. Neopat, please continue your mission because tonight reminds all of us who have lost in war sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, that we are not alone. Thank you for helping us bear the burden of the intensely lonely and painful journey through our grief. The more who are, well, are, who are willing to help us carry that burden, the lighter our hearts become. It has been 19 months for my family and still the burden is a very heavy one. We are learning that we will never get over this, but we can learn to live with a hole in our hearts with others by our side to lean on. Thank you for giving me, my family, this opportunity this evening to share the story of my extraordinary son, Sergeant Daniel James Patron. I believe that for every set of ears that hears Danny's name and every heart that his story touches, there is one more person who will honor his courage and his sacrifice and continue to tell his story long after we're not here to tell it. Thanks to each and every one of you who have come together tonight for a common purpose, to continue to serve those who serve our country. Thank you. Um, on behalf of uh, the Neopat board and the Northeast Ohio uh, for Patriotism, I'd like to present you with this plaque in honor of Daniel's service and sacrifice to the country. And I was raised for a long time to understand the, the, the thought and the consideration of the word, the two words of thank you. We've many times throughout this evening have thought and have heard how important it is to say thank you. And these people behind me truly have appreciated and understood that concept. So on, the, on behalf of Neopat, we would like to honor the Sergeant Daniel Patron Memorial Scholarship Fund with a $5,000 donation and say thank you to the family and the individuals that are a part of all this. So thank you. 